Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Frost and Fire. Little reminder, the challenge rules, and if you'd like to follow along, play along, or try this for yourself, here are the resources to do so. Before I get started, I wanted to let everybody know that this episode and the next three episodes will all be pre-recorded. I will not be able to record next week in real time, which means that the feedback you provide won't be incorporated for four more episodes. You're absolutely welcome to provide feedback to this series. I just won't be able to include it in any episodes for the next four. Pick it up where we left off. I am currently fighting the remnants of this mech or this uh, insect hive. Uh, the insect hive is a result of a quest I accepted. And I am trying to kill off this hive as fast as I am able so that all of the guests that are included, all of these soldiers that came with this quest can leave. What I'm gonna be doing is setting up uh, three heaters here, and then I'm going to double up some doors as well. I'm gonna be waking up my characters just to get this job done. So JD right now is heading over to do some building. And then Bash, what I'm going to have you do, I am going to set everybody up to stay close. And then Bash, you are going to deliver materials. Raptor, you're going to deliver materials. Uh, Gabe is going to then deliver uh, components. And we're going to try to get this constructed as fast as possible. So this is a warming station to allow me to kill off these hives to complete the quest. Because... The longer I go without completing this quest, the more that my guests are going to eat my food, have mental breaks, and be a general problem. I don't want them to be a problem. They're already a pain in my butt, so oh, I'm just trying to get this done as fast as humanly possible. So we're completing an entire power line uh, JD, you should go consume a meal, completing the power line so that we are able to turn on these heaters and create a warming station. Uh, the heaters here now, Gabe, I'm going to have you wake up. These heaters now have um, all, two of them have all the steel that they need so that they are going to be able to turn back and uh, uh, turn on and, and create the warming station. And I want you to go inside. I'm just going to be very, very overly cautious about the amount of uh, hypothermia that I am allowing. So now, oh, come on. You brought one component? Oh, Gabe. Why, man? All right, go inside. The guest that I had that was murdered, sadistically, has been killed. Um, Alright, so the problem is... We are very hypothermic. I'm basically hoping that we don't freeze out here. Uh, Bash, I'm going to need you to help with this. Build a second heater. So I'm I'm losing my hypothermia because this is warm enough with one heater, but one heater isn't really enough to make it that safe. So I'm having Bash come out and uh, and help JD. Two heaters, and then as we add more heaters, as you can see, it's getting safer and safer and safer. So at this point... Um, Gabe, I'm going to have you come out here, and Bash, you're going to come out here, and Raptor, everybody, everybody is going to come out, and we are going to kill off the um, the bugs as fast as I can. Now, I think, let me check the gear. I don't think any of my guests are particularly well insulated, and as a result, uh, they are not a benefit, but instead a liability um, because of how quickly they're going to freeze. They are not uh, nearly as well protected from the cold as I am. I do realize that there is a, uh, there is a, um, 
a charge lance that I could be using. Um, but at this moment, I'm just probably going to be punching these hives down, so I'm actually not that worried about a charge lance. And then when there's uh, when there's incoming insects, uh, I'm just going to use turrets. Uh, <clears throat> turrets. There we go. Okay, JD, it'd be good if you didn't shoot me in the back. So now this warming station is going to... Good, we set him on fire. This warming station... Oh, no, no, JD, get back. There's so little room to stand in this tunnel that it's a bit of a problem. Um, this warming station is going to allow us to uh, land attacks quickly. Uh, you are going to have to self-tend, I think. It's going to be faster for us to punch these down rather than to shoot them. So I just want... Oh, Bash, you're already hypothermic. Get inside. I just want uh, my guys to clear this infestation as fast as they are possibly able. So the punching method is definitely going to be um, the quickest. All right. Raptors becoming hypothermic. Uh, let's have them turn back. I'm going to close this door so that we can start to warm up. And this one too. Good. When we lose our hypothermia, I'll go back out there. It's going to be really important to clear this as fast as possible. So, JD, you are not particularly hypothermic. So I'm going to have you go bash that down. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to have you do? You are going to hunt this Bellopede and move him. Because he's uh, propping a door open that doesn't need to be propped. All right, checking our needs. Our health, 10%. Uh, 14%. 8%. I'm going to wait until it gets closer to zero. Uh, one of the benefits of this infestation is we are going to have a ton of food for um, for the crabs if I can salvage this. It's al also going to require me to make a freezer, uh, but, you know, that's fine. I'm fine having to do that. Now that we're a little bit further from our tunnel, I have to be more careful of hypothermia because of travel time. Okay, uh, at this point, the hives are all dead. Now it is about uh, finishing off all the enemies. Which I will do once I'm warmed up. Nope, we're done. Okay, perfect. Whew. There we go. What an endeavor. So we got the Eltex skull cap. We also got some uh, some additional favor. Uh, honor, rather. Which is great. And we have a ton of bugs. Absolute ridiculous amount of bugs to uh, finish off and butcher and all that. Uh, so one of the things I'm going to need to do is to create an impromptu... Um, create a freezer for all of the insect meat. Uh, so first things first, these crabs should not be included. Uh, all of these guests here are probably going to freeze to death on their way out. So that's another thing to think about is um, stripping them would break the rules. Let me just remind you of the rules here. As you can see, one of the rules here is I must remain neutral or allied with all factions. Other than, of course, the Reapers. Uh, so I can't really strip these guys for their gear. Uh, that would be a, a violation of the rules, and um, so despite the fact that there's obviously a ton of value in doing it, it's uh, not something I'm going to be allowed to do, unfortunately. But that was uh, 
that was a, a direct result of um, trying to make the series as difficult as possible. So the next thing I might want to do in this tunnel is to tunnel it back up so that it can uh, keep heat in. So I'm going to destroy this sort of um, extra panic area here that I set up to try to pen them in. And I'm going to start to rebuild the tunnel as I had originally done. Um, once we have some doors on here, I'm going to move my heaters so the, the entire tunnel heats up, not just have one little warm pocket. And I'm going to micromanage JD in doing this so it can get done sooner. Oh, but never mind. Stay inside, JD. He just got an infection to his singular wound on his leg. Uh, so he's going to need some bed rest. Uh, Bash, that means it's going to fall to you. Which is fine. Raptor, go 10 to JD with... Herbal meds. Now, a lot of the stuff... Okay, so two, two of them succumb to their uh, hypothermia. That's not terrible, I guess. And that gives me yet another charge lance, as you can see. Uh, which is honestly phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to equip up the charge lances... For JD and Gabe, JD when he's uh, conscious. Uh, so the hidden benefit of that quest, I think, obviously, was the fact that I got two charge lances, which are ridiculously good weapons that I didn't have to pay for. So this infection, uh, we're almost neutral. Yeah, we're we're catching up. Uh, the mega spider that I hauled in here, as you can see, um, it has already started to feed the the crabs. And and I think what I'm going to do is uh, this shelf, I'm going to clear it so that we're only feeding them insect meat. And then I'm going to raw food meat foul meat. Uh, I keep calling insect meat, but I mean foul meat. Uh, I'm going to put foul meat out here. And I hope the crabs yeah, the crabs won't be so hypothermic that they'll not survive getting out to this shelf. What I'm going to need to figure out is to devise a system where I can store a ridiculous amount of insect meat or fowl meat safely so that the crabs have access to it. That's a bit of a challenge. And I'm just sort of staring at the base here trying to figure out what that might look like. Uh, Alright, I have devised it. Hmm. Oh, we are getting a brown out. from minimum wind yet again. This minimum wind is punishing. Uh, let me turn off the biofuel refinery. And really anything else I don't really need. So this zone is going to be moved up a bit. I don't want it to share a wall with the, um, with, uh, the throne room, but instead I'm going to want some coolers. Maybe only three is necessary. I'm not really sure at the height of summer what's going to be necessary. Something like that. Uh, let's move this up one. Uh, 
and I can store the frozen meat in here. Or corpses or whatever it might be, but uh, meat, I think, most of all. Some of these corpses can be thrown in there as well. I don't want to butcher the corpses because, of course, that um, has a very negative mood effect. And we have our first uh, fertilized egg. Awesome. Oh, Cauterize is already hauling. Um, you know what, Cauterize? If you're hauling... Let me see how much work that you can do for us. All right, so JD should be on bed rest, and I'm going to ramp up his bed rest so that he recovers from his infection. Bash, that means that I am going to rely on you to do a lot of the construction work. There is not much of an alternative. Uh, that was totally pointless. I didn't realize that I had a uh, a thing to uh, <laughs> a thing to mine there. All right, he needs treatment again. Raptor, that's you. Uh, so these crabs should not stand on the butchery zone itself, so they don't eat the raw corpses. But instead, the meat and the meat shelf needs to be moved. But Cauterize is already helping to haul, which is awesome. Um, a little reminder, the cloth that I currently have coming is going to be earmarked for clothing and not for, um, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, earmarked for clothing and not marked for rugs, carpentry. With a flash storm. All right, so my worry is that uh, Angelia has to travel too far to get to the insect meat or uh, fowl meat bench shelf. That would be my only worry. Where do we take the other fowl meat? I don't even know where it went. Because she has some brain injuries, and as a result, um, as a result of her brain injuries. She doesn't move very fast. So I'm going to do a butcher creature of insects until we have Let's see pause when satisfied. So unfortunately I can't have it be specific to uh, insect meat. But uh, this will be my butcher creature requirement. So some of these creatures like the mega spiders are more dense, more um, resource dense to just leave them as corpses. So for now, I think the best thing for me to do is this butcher insect. Uh, I'm going to only allow mega scarabs and then eventually allow the spellopedes, etc, etc, etc. Here we go. Gabe, get inside. Raptor is tending and feeding. Cauterize. Uh, you probably should not be allowed inside. So let's rename this uh, Animal Hauling. So Animal Hauling Zone is going to be allowed here. Here. Because I want to prevent uh, Cauterize from going anywhere unwanted. For now, I'm just going to remove the meals and the flake. Because I don't want Cauterize eating the meals or flake. And I think that is an appropriate zone. Something like this is an appropriate zone for Cauterize. And that way, uh, we're not going to see Cauterize drinking the beer or um, eating go juice or something like that. That could have some really negative consequences.
So now that I'm getting access to things like granite blocks, I'm going to slowly be replacing the outside of the base with granite instead of keeping it um, flammable steel so that uh, would-be raiders are going to have a much, much, much harder time um, gaining access to my base. Gabe, what are you working on? I want you to move these heaters around. Trying to sort of warm up this area a little bit. It's basically ambient right now. But we'll, uh, we'll aim to fix that. Bash. You are integral into fixing that. Let's deliver the steel for the wall. Oh man, that was a really inefficient building there. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a few degrees warmer than ambient. Um, And then the idea here is if I wall it off here, I door it off there, uh, it will get even better. Bash is definitely major breaking. I gotta be careful about that. Where I have him working is not exactly a nice environment. I'm gonna expand this zone a little bit uh, so that I can move this spellipede that is in the way. And oh, come on, don't freeze to death. Cutting it a little close. Oh boy. The Psychodrone has ended, though, so the mood um, problems that he was having should be remedied. JD has an untreated infection. It's about, uh, you know, I'm not even going to treat it. Uh, it is 98% immune, so there's really no need to waste any more medicine. All right, I'm spreading out the, let's get rid of this door. I'm spreading out the heaters so that the main corridor there can be a little bit better. Uh, JD, you are now going to be able to stay close instead of inside only. And Gabe, I think, yeah, we're all set. We just want to make this, um, this uh, sort of crab freezer. Mortars just got researched. Excellent. I think, given all the brownouts I've been having, geothermal power, despite the fact that it will take an incredibly long time to research, is going to be the next best thing for me to do. And JD and Bash, I want you constructing primarily. I'll just babysit them to make sure that they are... Uh, not going to freeze to death in doing so. I'm going to remove uh, some of this construction project just so we can haul the blocks out where they belong. Angelia, I guess, got hypothermic and needed rescue. Yeah, th that's pretty much what I was worried about. I was worried that she, because of her brain injuries, wasn't going to be able to gain access to the foul meat. And, um... How are we butchering these insects? Why do I have more insect meat? I don't even know where this came from. Uh, not being able to gain access to the foul meat, and as a result, uh... 
go unconscious while outside, which is exactly what I didn't want to have happen. Oh, I think my stay inside, yeah, my stay inside zone is, uh, is a little off. It doesn't include some of the newest territory acquisitions that I've got. And it should include this bedroom. In fact, these bedrooms here, um, don't need to be heated at all anymore. It's pretty late in the in the winter for us to really care about that, but um, I'm going to set them up to be sort of closed. Now, before we wall everything off here, I'm going to have JD haul everything outside. Done. Okay, so now these bedrooms are uh, are not going to be heated. And as you can see, they've very quickly dropped to really quite cold temperatures. Um, cargo pods coming down of pemmican. Cool. Well, one of the advantages of pemmican is pemmican does not rot outdoors very quickly. Uh, so we're going to be able to grab that pemmican, um, you know, at a later date. And it won't decay on us because it takes a while for it to decay. Hey, JD's getting a little bit of frostbite. Bash, my good man. I need you to... Start constructing. Okay, here he goes. Because eventually it's not going to be winter anymore. And we are going to have a situation where... Um, very, very, very quickly, all the spiders on the uh, map tile will rot, and that is a massive waste of food. All right, untreated frostbite. Let's fix that. Oh, and a ship crash. A ship chunk. Okay, JD's fully healed. I figured as much. Most of the time, Frostbite's not that serious. So now I'm going to have him stay close, and I'm going to deconstruct this here, this corridor. Roof it up. Great. And uh, what's going to be important is for us to build it quickly so that we aren't exposed to the freezing temperatures of ambient here. In fact, uh, I'll probably put a heater in here. And that also means I'm going to need to run power to it as well, but that's fine. Yep, Angelia is down again. Yeah, so the freezer here where the crabs were going to be able to enter easily and feed themselves is going to be necessary to keep Angelia from constantly getting knocked unconscious every time... Um, every time uh, she gets too cold. Because that is a pattern that's going to get annoying quickly, I think. All right, Bash, you're up. I'm going to have Bash start working on this. And now the, stand, the uh, crab zone. Let's first change the crab zone so that it includes this area. And then change the animal hauling to be accurate as well. Great. And this is going to be a corpse and foul meat freezer. Um, we're definitely using a considerable amount of the steel that we got. Why are you hauling five cables at a time? Could you not? Oh my god. Alright, and that also means that we remove the roof here. Uh, Bash got hypothermic. That's fine, he can seek warmth. Okay, so at this point, uh, we are going to want to stockpile... Let's do it like this. We are going to stockpile um, 
Mega Spiders here because they're the most meat dense uh, corpse. And then we are going to put a bench, this bench of uh, insect meat right at the door. Well, right at the door kind of limits our movement speed. Maybe right here. And then have the crabs not allowed to eat the corpses and have the animal hauling not allowed to eat the corpses. So they're only gonna eat the insect meat. And that's sort of a min maxi way so that we can feed them and keep them happy. And this mega spiders, uh, let's have it be a critical. Now right now we don't really need to put these coolers on. Uh, this is mostly for the summer when they, uh, when the zone, when the map is much, much, much warmer, but I'll, I'll build them. Okay. So now we have a spot for all these mega spiders and a spot for the insect meat so that we can, uh, I keep calling insect meat, but it's foul meat, so that we can feed the crabs and not have them go outside the base, which is uh, what was constantly knocking Angelia unconscious. Um, the butcher creature zone here, uh, we're just gonna try to get as many um, mega spiders as possible. And then this heater here, I'm gonna set to like 26 degrees Fahrenheit, obviously below freezing, Oh, or, or rather, I should say, negative three Celsius, below freezing, very clearly, but not so much that um, our our pets will get knocked unconscious. All right, JD, at this point, I am going to go for... Oh, and you know what? Also, human meat. Um, stranger... Hu uh, you know what? I don't actually want human corpses in there, because uh, if, I, if I add human corpses in there, what will end up happening is we'll have to see dead bodies from time to time when we go in there. I'd rather not do that. So before this charge lance decays, I'm gonna grab it and grab the meals and get back to the base. So now we have two charge lances, which is just awesome. And a heat wave. Oh yes. Heat wave during the uh, winter is just great. Make some affecting some repairs. Um, so a lot of these tunnels are like fairly temperate, which is good. Uh, then I'm going to, I don't know what JD is doing, but I'm going to force haul. Another thing I need to do as it is warming up but not too warm is. Um, uh, hunt and kill off these insects. There's going to be a small window where they're still hypothermic and getting knocked unconscious, but where they're also, um, you know, where it's also warm enough for us to run around and like finish them off, uh, which is going to be important. So the butcher creature zone, uh, mega scarabs and spellipedes, I'm just going to have to. Temp uh, periodically unsuspend to refill the bench. And then another thing, and then as soon as that's done, suspend it back up. I don't think there's an automated way to do this. Another thing that I could do in here is to put uh, foul meat. Not as critical, let's say as important, so that the shelf gets it first. But just in case we generate some extra foul meat more than what we have um, storage for, we put it somewhere. You know, it, it has somewhere to live. Okay, you're building the wall. I should have you as a stay close zone. Uh, one of the things I could do now that I have him here is Finish off some of the bugs until he gets cold. Oop, don't drop your lance. And then maybe haul some of this jelly. Because obviously this jelly is worth a lot. This is a lot of silver. 608 jelly is worth a lot of silver. Um, so that's that's another thing that's going to be important to uh, to bring into the base. 
I don't think I want to store the jelly in here though, because I, I'm going to have a limited amount of uh, food storage. So I'm going to put the jelly um, in the general storage because it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't decay. It doesn't need refrigeration or anything like that. You know, it just needs to be inside. I think what I'll do tomorrow when they're all woken up is to do a caravan hauling for this jelly. I know how you all feel about caravan hauling, but um, it is a part of the game, whether you like it or not. We have more cargo pods. Ooh. Worn leather. So worn leather is sort of a generic uh, material that Frosted Fire introduces. Uh, sort of like patch leather, but not patch leather. I don't know really how to describe it. Okay, so we have a ridiculous amount of insect jellies. And then next time we're offered a trade, uh, we will be able to cash in in a big way. So the worn leather, as you can see here, has decent cold and heat insulation and decent uh, sharp protection. Uh, less insulation than cloth, but more protection. So what I'll do is the shirts, uh, we were running into a situation where we were gonna run out of materials uh, for tailoring, and we were gonna use cotton or cloth. Uh, what I could do is just use this worn leather that miraculously landed upon us uh, to make the shirts that we need. Easy as that. So let me take a look at this crab zone. So crabs should be able to go here if they want. Okay, so this, this zoning looks correct. Uh, Bash is just filling in where infestations might crop up. And we still have to replace a lot of the uh, cables and, and walls and doors, but I have a limited amount of um, steel right now, so I'm, I'm trying to pre uh, limit the amount of unnecessary construction that I, I undertake right now until my steel supply becomes more reliable. I will allow JD to build this wall here on the... Rare off chance that I actually get reapers that come in and I can hunt. Uh, let's not do that. That mega spider is too close to the uh, auto turret. This one isn't. And I'm going to have to remember to have him set on stay close. And there it is. Now he's set on stay close. Okay, cables don't cost very much, so I will allow for some cabling replacements. And we're going to keep hauling in these mega spider corpses. JD should be working on tailoring. Let me make sure he's, yeah, he's now prioritized for it. And bash before he goes back home is let's give him a little bit of hunting just to finish off this uh, so all of these spiders are fair game to be finished off so the stay close zone let's paint it like this I'm trying to memorize, 
Yeah, so this is sort of the the zone that's safe and we'll have everyone stay close in the stay close zone. So now my hunters should automatically start to finish off these uh, the animals that are um, uh, within the range of being finished off automatically. Oh, and here we go. The shirts, replacement shirts. This excellent shirt here protects 9 Fahrenheit. It's pretty good. I'm going to force wear it just that we swap. My braziers are uh, not lit anymore. Bash is replacing these cables. Oh, no, you're not. I don't know what you're... Oh, you're uh, hauling steel. Hmm. A meteorite of compacted steel. And conveniently placed right outside. Wow, the storyteller really does like me sometimes. So next up, let's go and finish off... Not with Bash, but finish off the hunting... Uh, a lot of these creatures just little mega scarabs and whatnot, but because they haven't actually been injured, once it thaws out enough, it's going to cause some real problems. I don't want them to thaw out, um, and then I'll have all of a sudden dozens of uh, in insectoids that are trying to overwhelm me. So, that's an important thing to take care of as well. And here you go, you can see JD and Gabe already doing it. And it's starting to snow, so it's going to make it harder to haul like that. But it will be worth it. I mean, look at all these Mega Scarab corpses. They're wonderful. Another thing I might be able to do is uh, set Bash up to cook uh, fine meals forever. And that way, the only meat I'll have left will be insect meat, and it will be able, I'll more easily be able to queue up. Um, queue up the correct uh, butcher settings. Once we fill this up with mega spiders, I will allow for spellopedes, as they are the next most dense. So the reason why I'm not butchering these is there is uh, 86 meat in them to be butchered, but they take up a 75 spot slot. They're actually better to not butcher because you can store more meat per square unbutchered. This is obviously way more true when you're talking about something like uh, an elephant, right? Where you can get hundreds and hundreds of meat, but an elephant fits into a one by one spot. Uh, it's less true for these mega spiders, but even still, these mega spiders are technically um, you know, meat dense enough to warrant not butchering. The spellopedes are not. So at this point, I'm going to allow the open butchering of spellopedes and mega scarabs. Oh my god. Seriously, Randy? What do you, what, Randy, Randy's about to kick me in the teeth. Just to show you, because I think this is ridiculous amount of luck, uh, if I check my storyteller settings, as you can see, I am a losing is fun, Randy Random. I just wanted to prove that, like, I did not hoodwink you and all of a sudden drop the difficulty. I would never do that. Um, but I did want to just prove, given that I just got a compacted steel landing on me, a ship chunk, and meat literally in my front yard, uh, that no, I am not cheating. I, I know that's hard to believe, but <laughs> I, I can't believe my luck. My luck is absolutely uh, amazing and absurd. And more cargo pods. All right, Randy, what are you what are you gonna do to me? You're about to you're. Anytime I get that kind of luck, I feel like Randy's about to drop the hammer. And I'm worried now. Because <laughs> if he's too nice, he becomes very mean. In my uh, in my experience. OK, 
Okay, that was Raptor switching out his shirt for a worn leather one. So how many shirts do we need to go? Bash already has one. It's kind of cruddy, but he has one. Uh, I might make one extra shirt if I have the material. I do. Just as a spare. Because Bash goes through clothing more quickly as he is a brawler. Well, everybody, that is all the time I have. Now that it is thawing out, I'm going to make an honest attempt at clearing out the infestation, or rather, the mech clusters, uh, so that Raptor can be granted his royal title. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below, keeping in mind that this was a recorded, a pre-recorded episode, and the next three episodes will be pre-recorded as well, as I am out of town, but I pre-recorded them so that you would have something to watch. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will catch you next episode. Farewell, everybody.